afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you might be in the world. Welcome to the ProSynth Network show. We are live. It is June the 23rd. Uh, the nights are drawing in slowly but surely. Um, it's just gone 7 p.m. here in the UK. And welcome uh, one and all. I hope you've had a fine week since last we met um, and you, you've been making lots of great music and nerding out with your synthesizers and all that kind of gubbins. Um, welcome to you all. I'm not going to go through the names in the chat room, but if you want to talk to us um, during the show, please do. Uh, you can do that uh, over there or under there, depending on where your how your YouTube page is set up. Uh, talk to us during the show through there. And of course, if you're watching on Twitch, you can talk to us through that as well. Same on Facebook. If you're watching on Twitter, um, then you can't for some reason they don't allow that um so yes you can get in touch with us during the show that way if you're watching on catch up thank you for for coming back um maybe you watched us the first time around missed something and you're coming back again to catch up on so, some stuff or maybe you're out and living a life uh, you're actually out in the wonderful sunshine that we have at the moment certainly here in the uk um so if you're watching on catch up you can comment down below and you can leave all your comments there. That would be fantastic. Um, let's just go through the normal housekeeping. Of course, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. Uh, either way, you know, it just lets us know uh, whether we're doing the right thing or not. And if you want to leave comments, as I said, you can. Do subscribe to us and hit the bell for notifications. And uh, if you know somebody who would like the show but doesn't currently watch, then do feel free to share the link around. We would appreciate it. Um, if you want to donate to the show to help keep us on air, because we rely completely on our, our, our members' uh, contributions, and you do so fantastically, um, we're into our third year, um, and we'll be into four by March of next year. And it's all down to you. It's all your fault. Um, you can do so. You can pay us at, uh, or you can donate to us at PayPal. Um, or you can use the uh, YouTube Super Chat and Super Stickers. They all work as well. So if you want to do that, that's fantastic. Of course, you're not obliged to. It's a completely, completely, completely free show. I must slow down my speech. It's been a busy day. I've been really hectic. Um, if you want to follow us on all the social media channels, you can do Twitter, Instagram, of course, the main group is on Facebook, so please do come and join us over there where we all tend to congregate and sort of chat amongst ourselves during the week. And of course, we're here on YouTube. If you have a question for anybody on the show today, including our very special guest, who we will come to very shortly, then please stick it into the chat, but put a big capital Q in front of it because that way we're able to kind of pick it out, put it into the right column, and then we can bring those questions back to ask later. Ah, there we go. That's all the boring stuff out of the way. Let's get into the show proper, shall we? So, um, oh, before I do, thank you to our admins or our moderators in the chat. So we've got Andy. Uh, we've maybe got, I haven't seen him yet. Uh, we've got the other Andy, Andrew Brooks, and uh, possibly um, Ben from Musings. But uh, if they're not there, they, they will be soon, I'm sure. But they look after the shop for us. So thank you, gentlemen, for that help. And uh, welcome to you all. Um, I'd love to say hi back to everyone that's uh, name checking us in the chat. But there's just so many of you. So thank you. Right. OK, so um, we come to our very special guest in just a moment. But um, coughing and spluttering in the background is me old mucker, Mr. Kent Spong. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely knackered, actually. <laughs> I see another hell. square has come down. Yeah, anybody who picked H4 and <laughs> H5 have won a prize. You've sunk the battleship. Yes, you have managed yeah. to sink my battleship. Indeed. <laughs> How's the... Uh, I see you've, you've, you've brought the CS80 round 90 degrees. Oh, yeah, I'm doing the... Old... You, aren't you doing the Tori Amos kind of thing? Or yeah, Wakeman? Uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of. I wouldn't go that far. But Is yeah. it plugged in? What, this one? Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's a bit. That was a bit on the right. That one as well. That's a bit yeah, yeah nice. same here. Weirdly, I don't know why. That's very strange. Yeah. I, anyway, I will investigate. It's, the computer's been turned off and turned back on. It's never the same. No, you know what it's like. So um, yeah, no, you mad, mad, mad. Uh, yeah, yeah, OBXA. Madly trying to get that done for the end of the week. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else has there been. Oh, uh, we took Siri to the uh, groomers today, um, who. Uh, as we walked out of the groomers, um, then began to scream at the top of her voice, and we had to go and take her back. Wow. Um, she, well, she's never been separated before. Um, oh, I and see. And she was always a bit 
huh. about it. So, okay. and as she was jump going to, I opened the door on the in, on the Chrysler for her to jump in, and she mm-hmm. sort of like got confused and panicked and jumped up on the bonnet, and then <laughs> tore all the paintwork off it with her nails. Oh no! So the bonnet's completely destroyed. Oh my word! Oh, yeah. Dear, dear, dear. However, that's okay because on the upside, um, Fiona made up made up for that um, well it arrived this morning she bought me a small gift oh Ooh. she bought me this Ooh, look oh look at that mm. wrong colour though wrong colour but it's it, it's, it's nice. the only car I've ever owned when you can actually buy proper models of them yeah and this nice. door doesn't fall off on the road <laughs> when you open ah. it so for those for those who have not been watching regularly uh, Kent has a uh, a Mac 1 Mustang uh, in his driveway, it's a blue one, and the doors fell off. <laughs> yeah, as they do. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it says yes, one door opens, another one closes. So absolutely, this yeah, car well, pretty it, much lives that. As one door opens, the other one opens as well. As falls on the road voluntarily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Anyway, good to see you, mate. Thank you. All. By the way, got, 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 I have to say, um, thank you for your donation. Oops, wrong way round. To the studio, it's taking up more desk space now. But um, okay. On, on onwards with my um, exploration. As said, uh, little by little, I'm getting rid of it. That's it. Yeah, you're just popping <laughs> it all off on me. <laughs> Jolly good. Got Excellent. Room. Yeah, not much. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's move across. We can't seem to shift this old guy. He's he's like he's like that that old fella that you can't shift out of the pub at half past eleven. <laughs> Mr. Andrew Longhurst. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> stuffed with animals. Stuffed with stuffed animals. Even. It's um, behind you. How are you, uh, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Ah, I'm very good. Thank you. The penguin of death is enjoying being back. Say hello, penguin of death. He doesn't speak. You know, no. Just, just so you know, he's a penguin oh. of death. He's very, you know. Doesn't need to, does he? Man, a few words, yes. but many swords. Lovely. So, uh, Busy week. It, it's it, it's been a really bitty week. Again, one of those ones lot on, but they just turn into lots. Of, and we've been in the garden a lot this week. We're just doing a whole redesign out the back. And we've posted a couple of pictures and we've had an awful lot of skippy jokes because we've been waiting two weeks for a skip to go so we can move on. So, um, yeah, but otherwise good. It's been, you know, nice weather and, yeah. Got- it has been. It's been rather lovely here in the UK, I have to say. It has. It has. Well, thanks for standing in for, for Ben's considerable size lines again. Indeed, uh, very considerable. Much appreciated, much appreciated. I, d- I did speak to Ben earlier. Um, he is doing okay, and hopefully we'll be back next month. So fingers crossed. Um, so that's that's all the old fogies out of the way. Um, let's introduce you to our incredibly special guest. Um, I've I wanted to get this lady on uh, the show for for a little while, and um, we we share a mutual friend. Well, actually. Uh, I guess in some respects, um, this gentleman is probably her boss in in some some regards. Um, and for, for me, he's just somebody I talk to a lot about synthesizers. And we have a, a mutual uh, sort of uh, to and fro with our, our podcasts and, and so on and so forth. Um, of course, that gentleman is Mr. Martin Ware. And this lady uh, plays keyboards and, and does a lot more besides for Heaven 17. Um, it's Florence or Flo Sabeva. Welcome to the show. Hi, hi. How are you? How are you? Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. And yes, Martin is kind of my boss. <laughs> <laughs> he signs the checks at the end of the week, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, look, it's absolutely fantastic to get you on the show. Um, you are a pianist, composer, songwriter, keyboard player. You, you've, I mean, I was looking through your website. There's, there's not a lot you haven't done. I mean, it's yeah, quite I've a... <laughs> I like for somebody to so do... young. I like to do a lot of things. And yeah, absolutely. I'm very curious. Yes. Yeah, and and also you love your technology and your synthesizers, which of course is good absolutely. for the show. Yes, absolutely. Brilliant. Um, I've got lots of questions for you. I'm sure our audience will probably have as well, and I'm sure Kent and Andrew. I did ask them to come up with some stuff. Uh, so and what we'll is be the throwing... capital of Syria. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> That's is what it? I said. Well, I don't know, but it, that's one oh, of the that questions I've come question? up with. Okay, well, it's not a very good one. Oh, dear. Oh. Right, anyway, let's get everybody on the screen. There we go. So um, if you have a question for Flo about uh, her work with Heaven 17 or her solo work, her composition work for films, um, her songwriting uh, or anything like that, then please do throw it into the chat room, stick a big cue at the front of it just so we can highlight it, 
and then we'll ping it up uh, at some point during the show. There, there's not much. There's not much in the way of news this week. Um, there's two or three items that I've sort of thrown on the list. Uh, unless anybody comes up with something, nothing really has emerged over the last 24 hours. So that that's good because it gives us more time to talk to Flo uh, about that, um, about her career and everything else. So um, we'll do that. Um, we'll come to the news topics maybe a little bit later. So um, I guess I'm going to kick things off. Uh, let's start at the beginning, Flo. Um, how did you get first of all how did you get into music do you come from a musical family and and how did you get to to where you are today what what's your background yes okay long story <laughs> long story we have yes, time. Well, uh, i come um i come from uh, my father was a violinist classical violinist okay so i started music with him uh at very at five years old so just you know oh wow doing the piano, things like that. And yeah, and I started to really enjoy it and wanted to do it professionally. Mm -hmm. So the beginning, uh, my first love was classical music. <laughs> but then um, during my teenage years, I started to listen to other kind of music, obviously. And that's where I started to fall in love with synths and uh, everything like around composition and everything that's more creative, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that you can just like, yeah, experiment yeah. more, do more experimentations. So yeah, after I finished, I studied conservatory. And after that, I started playing with bands since pop in back in Belgium, because I'm from Belgium. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, when I moved to London, did the same and that's how I met uh, the guys, Heaven 17, Heaven mm -hmm. 17, like Martin and Glenn. And that's how I started my journey with them. Cool. Uh, didn't you study at Berkeley? Yes, I did as well. Yeah. I did like songwriting, uh, film music as well over okay. there. <clears throat> yeah. So you went, you went out to California and studied there for, for a period? Uh, it was not the, um, it's the one in Boston. Oh, in the month, so Boston, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yes, yeah. So yeah. it was like a winter, high, heavy snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not, not, not particularly nice out there at that time of year. No, no. So, um, Heaven 17, let, let, let's get that, that one out of the way. So how did that all come about? Was it a fortunate meeting? Was it a recommendation? You know, how, how did you get to work with the guys and, and sort of get you in there? Well, we did kind of, um, because I was playing with a band uh, and we released an album. So around, I was playing a lot of synths as well. Um, and I think the guys saw me on a gig. We were playing um, one festival where we did the opening and then they mm -hmm. played. Um, uh, so we had kind of mutual friends as well. Mm -hmm. And once Berenice, uh left to to start playing with uh simple minds they were looking for someone and they they asked if i was available and if i was interested and of <laughs> course <laughs> I <say> yes <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah so that's kind of the, the the background story and so you've been with them for a little while now and uh you you tour quite heavily don't you yes we've done it was it was it was great we did america um in uh, last September, of October. course, yeah, yeah, that was uh, quite something. Um, we did Germany as well, which was amazing, and we have mm -hmm. a tour in the UK in November. <clears throat> so yes, and is that is that one the anniversary? Is it luxury gap anniversary? Yes, luxury yeah. gap anniversary. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. No, I mean, um, I've been to, I think I went to the Penthouse and Pavement one. I think they did a luxury gap one about five years ago or 10 years ago. Uh, and they are, the thing with Heaven 17 gigs is they're incredibly good, so tight and really great value for money um, because, you know, like every song's a classic and, and they throw in a few human leads uh, tracks as well, don't they? Yes, yes. And we did like um, the um, last set. Uh, I think it was not last September, two years ago, the travel log at. Um, oh yes. And we did that, and that was amazing. Like mm. all this kind of early, um, 
these tracks like going deep into that uh finding the sounds as well trying yeah. to, to be exactly uh, you know just to, to dive deep into yeah. these sounds that was super super like amazing for me so how familiar were you with like those early human league and, uh, and even the early heaven 17 stuff i have to say not um well the early human league um i was not very familiar with them so uh it was great for me because we went i went um into the studio with martin mm -hmm. and we listened to the songs together and he had one of the uh, keys that he used as well so he showed me what he did um so that was that was amazing yeah because we got to kind of see and just like really hear it live with him um yeah so quite enjoy that uh on that um that travelogue uh, recreation um didn't martin borrow in a jupiter 4 and i think he did he bring his own system 100 and a, a korg 700 yes i, I can't, can't remember, remember. exactly yeah. yes i can't remember exactly what he he brought but yes definitely um there was there was a, there was um, vintage gear there <laughs> vintage gear there was one that we needed like to tune really i uh, can't remember which one it was yeah so um but that was giving to the show something very special as well yeah absolutely <clears throat> cool stuff uh guys have you got anything you uh, want to throw in before i carry on with my line of questioning yeah, i'd love to or, or, ken do you go have on. something no, go, go on no, no. so um this is the pro synth network so everyone's of course nuts <laughs> about synths um but i think an awful lot of people uh, are also fascinated by the idea of film scoring um everyone that's got a synth thinks they can create a score for a film right every <clears> single <throat> one of us and i noticed that i mean you've you've done an awful lot of film scoring or or quite a quite a bit um i was just really interested when i was reading up about you I saw you uh, had entered quite a few competitions and you got quite a bit of exposure that way. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Because that seems like a, a really good way to start getting into some of those areas of the business. Yes, absolutely. So there's, there's quite a lot of film music uh, competitions where you have to either rescore a scene, either you have something really original where you can like something new that haven't had any any music on it and and make your own music so um and by doing that you get to know the community as well because you connect with other composers you connect with the filmmakers you connect with a lot of people and and that's that's been super helpful and then some competitions also offers to uh, play live like a prize like you've got the opportunity to play your music live with a, a small chamber orchestra or some some people so that's always all a good way to um to have live recording with musicians of your music so um definitely and recommend doing it that's that that's really good i, I was just wondering um you you seem to specialize i think you started off on violin and then you know you have piano as well um but i have been hearing some of your scores with electronic music or electronic uh, accompaniment as it were synths what do you know what you know what what synths you know, typically do you use do you have something that's a favorite at the moment is there anything you're particularly you know fond of familiar with well what i like to do at the moment is really kind of process it's more in the terms of processing than just taking uh one synth specific synth i take a sound um and i like to process it so really work with the waves and the cutoff and um and then putting effects on it so i can do that as well with a sample with for example the vocals and so i just record my voice and then i try to process it but through a granular synth for example so um and then I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah, granular synthesis is a lot of fun. Yeah. Ke Kent, have you got have you got anything you you particularly? You're looking very pensive. I'm sure. Is there anything particularly you have? <laughs> you know, I, I naturally look like this. Yeah. Just, <laughs> this is my natural pose. This is resting state. <laughs> um. Yeah. Actually, I'll be quite interested. In, like you played a, a unicorder, didn't you? Yes. What What did you think of it? 
I really liked it, uh, mm. personally. Um, well, I know it's at the moment it's quite the fashion, the fashion instrument as well. And so right. some people are just getting a bit bored of it. But I think it's got something very nice because it's soft and it creates an atmosphere. Um, and I've met uh, Clavins, uh, his name is David Clavins. Mm. And he explained me uh, how he started um, because he started with Nils Fram and, mm. and how it evolved. And he's really passionate about what he did. He showed me a picture because he has the one, the, the giant, he called oh, the, it. Yeah, the 450. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, 450. Yeah. <laughs> so he showed me a picture, he explained me how, how he started doing that. So it was really nice for me because I met him. I went to Budapest and, and, uh, and I met him there. Mm -hmm. So um, he's someone so passionate about what he he's doing that it's just to speak with him is 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 amazing. It's great. Wow. Yeah. yeah. If anybody, uh, let me just bring this up on screen because uh, I'm sure some people might may not know what an una corda piano is. Um, let me just uh, just doing this all on the fly. None of this <laughs> none of this is set up. Um, so. So perfect, and I feel so nicely. And then here it is; it's on the screen. You see, um, yeah. so yeah, this is um, the Clavin's Piano uh, website where uh, you've got you know this unicorder, um, which is unicorder being one string unicorder um, per note with an open body design and no cabinet. Um, but the the I'm just trying to pick. There it is. That's yeah, the big one, isn't 15 it? Fifteen foot up in the air. Yeah, I mean, look Playing at the it. size of that. Yeah, but that down Whoa. the bottom end. Oh my. God god i am yeah didn't well, native uh, instruments do a sample library of that they I did, did, they did. yeah I did, mm. was it the one 182 i think they did a sample library. yeah one of the big ones yeah and uh, did you sorry um flo did you actually play the 450 or no just no. The Unacor no, the <laughs> yeah. no what's i mean for, you're, you're obviously an accomplished pianist um so from your perspective what are the qualities of the unicorder over say a regular strung piano is is what what are the differences that you really appreciate in one of those well it's um it's a type of music so obviously you're gonna the way you're gonna play is gonna be different than on the on the I would say like full on piano mm -hmm. grand piano or baby grand piano or even upright piano um so the compositions are a bit different. So you're really looking for something more intimate, like something that can be recorded in a studio, for example, mm -hmm. more than for for live music. Uh, I that's my opinion, obviously. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of artists use it for live as well. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But um, because it has this soft sound, and if you put the mics very close in the studio environment, then you can get all these details in the clicking of the piano and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I would say, yeah, you cannot have as much dynamics. So you cannot play, for example, something like Rachmaninoff, for example, on an mm. Una because you can't have this kind of loud, uh, fortissimo <laughs> yeah. sound. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And but yeah, I think sorry to cut you. Uh, I no, think no. it's nice as well a sound that is soft. That if you want, because I'm thinking of an artist because he w he was the first one who, who started playing that, like Nils Fram, who's yeah. mixing it with synths, and it goes well together as well. It mm. just yeah. really uh, blend together well. So um, we mentioned that native instruments do. Uh, a sample library of this um which is currently on sale by the way we're not getting any kickbacks so i'm just saying i've just noticed <laughs> it's it's down from 129 to 64 pounds 50 um so if you're really into it have you tried the native instruments one and how if so does does it compare really well to the real deal yes i i have the library i have the, the mm -hmm. giant and the unacorda it's really good because they also have different uh, presets already so with a lot sure. of reverb with lots of effect uh, sorry effects um so it's it's quite good yeah 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 I'm, mm. it's, it's i have to admit i mean i'm not a, a, a player by any stretch of the imagination but um a musical player that is not not the other kind of player um but uh yeah it's, it's something i've been very interested i do like a good piano and of course kent loves his pianos. Oh, I love a mm. good piano. He loves a good piano. Oh, yes, as indeed. do I. As well. Because mm -hmm. um, Kent, you uh, 
but just sort of like going into the, the world of sample libraries i know that maybe um you wanted to maybe ask some questions about sample libraries and because the, the, and the reason i'm sort of trying to make this connection here is because um you do a lot of workflow with um you know orchestral uh players cellists violinists that sort of thing but in your I, i'm assuming in your little home studio there you don't have the room to put all of these people in so what do you use instead <laughs> and i don't know kent if you have anything you want to kind of add to that um no, I just wonder. I just, just wonder because you, you used to play violin. I suppose you've got a better idea of like if you're using something like I don't know Vienna. You you have a better idea of when you change like the the sample for the the backstroke, the forward stroke, and stuff like that, where they would be as you play it. If you understand what I mean, if you have a better idea of the technique. So choosing the right samples along the way, yeah. Yeah, sorry, it got cut a little bit. So I'm oh, not. No. So I think it's my end. So can you Let's... just re yeah. <laughs> repeat what you just said? Yeah. Sorry about that. I, I I think so. I'm not quite sure what I said. <laughs> I, th um, I think. Well, th I think the gist of what you were saying was um, mm. you were talking about because Flo, you you are a violinist. I think that was your first instrument. So a lot of these sample libraries like Vienna and others have all of the articulations, the different bowing techniques. Um, yeah, how how um, how do you go about using all of that? Because it's it's quite you know it'd be a complex thing to kind of get into program. But um, how do you go about using that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's, it can it can be quite uh, complex. Um, but there's these libraries are really well done. Like I have the BBC, uh, the yeah. Spitfire BBC, and they have the articulation. And of course it helps because I have, I played uh, violin and I played as a teenager in orchestra as well. So I've been surrounded with, you know, all the mm. other mm. instrumentalists. So that really helps in knowing, oh, this articulation, you can do that, that, that or that. Um, it gets easier to use these sample libraries. But at the beginning it can be a bit like, oh my God, how, how am I going to yeah. do this? <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have particular... <laughs> Do you have particular favorites that you like to use? Uh, like I said, I really like the, the BBC, uh, mm -hmm. Spitfire mm -hmm. BBC. I really like as well the, um, uh, oh, I forgot this, but the Vienna as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's another one. And of course, I forgot the, the <laughs> name. That's my and does, do you do you tend to work in sections or do you like using solo instruments what is there one that's better for for each of those so a solo instrument's good in one library but you tend to use the sections from another library how does that work for you yeah i tend to when it comes to full orchestra to give it kind of something realistic i try i tend to mix different libraries mm -hmm. uh because then it just kind of blend more together uh, because the articulation is different from one library to the other. So it kind of uh, creates something that is more authentic. Um, sometimes I like to have maybe the top line played by, if it's possible, by a real, like a violinist or a cellist or something like that yeah. to have that um, uh, to blend as well. And for solo uh, instrument, I always find when it comes to solo, I prefer to ask someone to just perform it, if mm -hmm. it's if it's possible, of course, for solo instrument. Even though there's a lot of libraries as well that are amazing, but I feel like if you want someone a line to be just in front, it's great to have a real person to to perform it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a, um, that's a, yeah. sorry. Go on, go on. No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just thinking that that's as much to do with the fact that someone that's playing a real instrument will play it in that they'll know the instrument, and so they'll know how to bring a particular sound, their own their own sound and performance mm. out of it that you won't get from a library. And I think a, f a lot a lot of people over the years have been using things like drum libraries. Um, and and often when you're using sample drums or even drum machines getting a real drummer in to do hi-hats or snares or fills or whatever you know overheads just brings it back to life a bit 
Yeah. Um, and, I, and I know when I've done string stuff in the past, having someone, you know, a cellist or someone, just to bring that, that one element in that sits over the rest, just, just suddenly glues it all together, right? <coughs> yes, totally. And this, this thing about, especially you talking about drummer, but definitely if you can have someone, because you never 100% like, you know, in the program um, the software, you do the quantization and, and even if it's tried to humanize it, it's never like a real human person and having the feel or the groove or the thing. So, yeah. So yeah, that's definitely. a question for you then. Do you tend to quantize when you're playing in or do you record straight to the door? Hmm. I do both. <laughs> <laughs> And why not? Yeah. It depends on how tired I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really tired and I can't play right now. It's just like I use both. I try to have, if I have a sense, because it depends on the instrument. If I record something straight, obviously, it's like from the instrument itself. So you cannot quantize. But um, if I play something MIDI and sometimes I just look, oh, this note maybe a little bit before or a little bit after. Yeah. <laughs> so happen. that begs the question then. So we're talking about working in the door and adjusting stuff. What is your your door of choice? Do you have one or do you have a, a combination of, of tools that you use on the computer? Uh, I work on in Logic mainly. Mm -hmm. Mainly Logic. I use Ableton as well. I like Ableton for live performance. Um, mm -hmm because it's good as well to use it for loops and things like that, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to do as well. Um, I'm not an expert in Pro Tools, but I'm just just like trying to sure. understand yeah. it. Yeah. So um, you mentioned Ableton Live. I'm going to bring the, the, the conversation now back round to uh, a more synthesizer um, element and I, I want to talk about heaven 17 as a live band um now obviously on on stage there's uh martin and greg there's yourself um there's the two lady backing vocalists who sometimes change is it kelly and kelly and rachel rachel mainly. that's it that's it so yeah. it's um a five piece essentially on stage yeah. Uh, Martin's at the front with his keyboards. You're, you're, you kind of take up the center role there, surrounded by equipment and stuff. So my first question is to you, what's your rig? Um, what, what's in, in the Heaven 17 rig in terms of synthesizers and computers? And then how are you using each piece of, you know, of that equipment? Yes. So in terms of synths, I have the Phantom 6. It's both Roland, so mm -hmm. Phantom 6 and the System 8. So these are my two keyboards uh, that I use for the live show. Um, I like the Phantom 6 because it, there's some, in some songs, there's like um, pia a piano sound that is mm -hmm. needed, like in Let Me Go, um, which other even in temptation there's a piano mm. part so that's good to have that to play these piano parts and um, obviously this is the made i love it and because sometimes we play being boiled and yeah. this is the kind of sound that we need uh for a track like being boiled so um the system made would be more for that um that really more grainy uh sound as well mm -hmm. and um Martin changed. He likes as well to play uh, with the System 8, but now he's thinking, well, I don't know. He wants to kind of, he likes to bring some fun, something new, something different. Mm -hmm. um, and I have the computer as well, where they have worked on, you know, the different layers of sounds to be able to, um, so not have, yeah. yes. Do you use software synthesizers or is it purely the Phantom and the System 8? It's purely the, yeah, not uh, Phantom and System 8. Okay. And um, with the System 8, uh, one of the questions that we have from one of our um, viewers is what what synths do you have loaded in the System 8? Because obviously it uses the, the plug-out synthesizers. So do you do you load in some vintage you know plugins into that to, to play live? Um, for this... We, um, 
I have the, um, let me just, I have mainly the sound of the System 8. Okay. Um, and most of them, there's some of the other sound that I, um, yes, just trying to, because so I did it, I did it like in the beginning where we just, <laughs> and I can't remember quite how, no, no, you no, know, no. because we did it with Martin and I can't remember quite how we did it because we just trying to, yeah, I should try to dive deeper into that to <laughs> answer this question. So on, on the, on the laptop then, uh, I'm assuming you've got just some layers for, for backing, some extra stuff that's going on in there, drums obviously as well. Yes. Mainly the drums, uh, some other layers that obviously because there's only two hands to play, <laughs> <laughs> other layers that uh, can't be played uh, live that, um, yeah. or, or the synths that are more vin like, we cannot like bring a whole kind of um, 20 synths on stage to play Quite, yeah. <laughs> for every gig, so yes. So is Martin still using, he was using a V synth, wasn't he, with his... Uh... At front of stage was it a v-synth gt i can't remember it was a big yes yeah. the v yes the v-synth um it, sometimes he likes like i said also do you use the system eight okay so um but lately it was the v-synth that he's been using yes and does he still like to use the d beam where he's waving his hand up yes. and down? <laughs> he loves doing that it's the only person i've ever seen uh playing live that actually uses a d beam um <laughs> It, there's kind of an in-joke, isn't there, in the community with the D-beam. It's just, it, why, why it never took off, I'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so you've got... Um, it's, it's, fairly kind of, you know, it's a fairly compact rig. What's, yeah. what, what do, you, do you have any, anything for redundancy? If anything should break down, do you have like a second uh, computer with stuff on, you know, just in case? Is there anything have, in the background? Uh, uh, we have the yes, we have a backup of everything. Mm -hmm. um, on I have everything on a hard drive just in case for yeah. uh, the tracks. Um, obviously, we have if one of the keyboards is not working, there's in the storage lots of different keyboards there. Oh, good. <laughs> so uh, usually it's we yeah it's yeah. we have everything we need. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Guys, anything else uh, rattling off in your brains that you'd like to throw in Flo's direction? Um, well, yeah, there was there was one thing we've in recent. Well, I keep banging on <laughs> about um, articulation, and I think it's something which um, you know a really hot topic is the ability to use uh, poly aftertouch MPE to, to give. Uh, a, a lot more control and articulation when you're playing. So, with something like the Roly, you have you know you can slide up and down and wobble left to right and so on and so forth. There's all these different controllers. Have you have you used any of those? And and do you get you know have you got on with any of that? Is it something you're tempted by? Well, yes, I have a f oh, the seaboard. Oh, I have a friend who has it, so I've tried it, and it is a bit of practice, just really to get that kind of aftertouch um, sound. But I really like it. I think because it's, it's kind of you can get really creative with that, and um, yes, I'm really interested in in this as well. And I guess I guess there's a. Uh... There's an enormous difference between what you play live, uh, how you write for certain styles of music, you know, pop, whatever, um, electro pop, and how you would compose for maybe a film where you want that articulation. You know, when I asked you earlier about whether or not you quantize or just record it straight in, it was specifically I was thinking about for some compositions, you just want to feel your way through and not be constrained by rigid timing. Whereas with others, you need to be driven by the timing to make it work, right? So I just, I just wondered, the question, I suppose, is um, how, how much of that, how much of the articulation feeds, you know, being able to articulate a sound, particularly with synthesizers, feeds into your compositional style? Oh, that's a good question. But I would say it's, it's actually very important to have that kind of 
feel um, and not to have everything straight. Uh, so I would say, yeah, in terms of percentage, <laughs> uh, I don't know, but this kind of, it gives the kind of human uh, touch as well. And I'm thinking, because when we think about synths as well, you think about even just playing with the cutoff or the uh, some of the envelopes can give as well that um, that feeling of something that is alive and yeah so to answer your question <laughs> i think yeah let's say i think 70 percent would be like um of this kind of process and then the rest is maybe more clear and neat around that something uh, like that and i was also thinking that with playing a playing a violin as opposed to a keyboard keyboards you know used to be just sort of on off with with some velocity you know coming along and then after touch and various other things um but it's it's a, it, it always was a fairly one-dimensional sound in, in some respects in terms of how you could articulate but you did have modulation and pitch bend so you could do a bit more and as you say get to filters and things so you start livening it up because you play violin i was wondering whether or not something like the rise because you have different ways of interacting and different ways of of uh, controlling and articulating, whether or not that f that for you that felt like a a closer to a violin way of playing, and whether or not that's that's kind of got you interested more in it or not. Oh, huh, well, I've never. Yeah, that's a really good question. I never thought about that, but you might be right because I've always been like, I like the piano and the keyboards to have the really. I would say the structure because you have all the range the range of a keyboard is like the, all the instruments but then obviously when it comes to a violin or a cello um it's you got this kind of it's closer to the human voice and what you can do with the the voice as well mm. and it certainly does influence my compositions to have that kind of um Breathe in in the music. I'm not breathing, mm. but like la that tactility, that is... the tactility yeah. you get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yes. Excellent. Um, I've got some questions from our uh, audience, um, so I'm just going to pick a, a few of those out. So um, Ben wants to know what was your first ever synthesizer, and then what is your favorite synthesizer? So <laughs> oh, that's first cool. and favorite. Okay, the first one was not, yeah, it was the, um, a Korg, the, I think it's the Mini Korg, it was not a really, oh, yeah. um, it was not an amazing, well, it's a, it was a good synthesizer, a small one yeah. to start with, uh, so that was my first one when I was quite young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say my favorite, but I don't have it, um, oh, it's difficult, because if I, I really like, um, I really like there's one that I've heard which is um, one that actually Olaf Arnolds used a lot which is the Korg the PS30 uh, uh, 3100 uh, the 3300 yeah. 3, yeah, yeah yeah and this is something that I would love to have at home <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't we all <laughs> yes right <laughs> yeah so that's um, yes that's one uh, really bucket list i would say yeah um i like if i well i can go to i like the prophet uh, some of the prophet the six mm -hmm. um i've tried at the friends i don't have it either <laughs> mm -hmm. um and the junos uh 106 mm -hmm. is is also like one uh, that i gorgeous really enjoy. instrument yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> lovely instrument so yes. if anybody wants to know what to get Flo for Christmas, a yeah. cool, cool 3300, P3300. Yes. Um, Thank you. Ken, did you, have, did you have one of those come through your workshop? No, I've got, I got, one, no, got one coming in next week. A 3300? Yeah. Oh. Does it have through, armed I've, guards? I've got a 3200 <laughs> here at the moment that was semi-abandoned. Mm. We'll wait and see. Yeah. But, I mean, which is, it, it, it actually, the 3200 is actually very different from yeah. the 31. Um, but not, if that makes sense. What Whereas is the 33 is three 3100s. 
Yes. Right. Three oscillators, or, or rather, three oscillators per key. Per key. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, so and it's so you have three different resonators. You have um, so you can sweep it about all over the place all at the same mm. time. And of course, it will move as you go from one voice to another. Mm-hmm. Um, the thirty-two hundred is the one that is sort of based on the thirty-one, but then they introduce uh, an extra filter. An ensemble circuit and memories, mm. right? And the memories are very rudimentary. <laughs> and occasionally work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but when you edit it, you have to put each knob pulls out, and then it can be read, and then you oh. yeah. push it back in again. It's, so it's quite fiddly. You go, did I put that knob back in? Which is not <laughs> something you want to say in public. No, quite. No. <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, they, they are lovely. They are lovely. They're, they're, I mean, yeah, all right, they're effectively, they are string synthesizers, basically, but, but at least the architecture. But there's a lot more to them because it's a Korg 35 MS-20 filter, basically, to each key. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if Korg would ever get around to doing a re-release, uh, a new version of 33. I couldn't possibly say anything. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, yeah, but... It is. There is one of a one. There is a um, so. There's a company called Full Bucket Music, um, mm. who and the guy there does amazing um, software plugins, and he does have a penchant, shall we say, for for Korg, vintage Korg, and mm. he has got a thirty one, a thirty two, and a thirty three hundred plugin, which are completely free of charge and. Uh, I'm just looking at the screen here. I'll just bring. Let me just bring this up because um, I I love singing this guy's praises because he does amazing work. Uh, it's Full Bucket Music is the name of the uh, the site. Uh, there we go. Um, and yeah, so version one two two of the thirty three hundred um, was still you know uh, updated uh, earlier this year. Um, now I couldn't attest to the authenticity compared to the hardware. I'm sure. Um, that it's not going to be quite the same because it's a free plugin, but his stuff is very good. Oh, it's damn close. Yeah, is it really? It's it's yeah. close enough to go. Wow, I don't have to spend one hundred and ten thousand pounds <laughs> on a thirty three hundred. Because that's the thing. They're kind of six thing. figure yeah. sums. Yeah, they are I mean, now. Yeah, I People used talk- to own one and I sold it for thirteen hundred pounds because I yeah. couldn't afford to get it sorted out at yeah. the time. You couldn't even was- find somebody to help you lift it into the skip. <laughs> no. Honest to God, you couldn't. And now suddenly, boom. Yeah. Well, it's like these things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, a CS80, uh, what's it, 40,000, 50,000 pounds nowadays? Yeah, which give, is it? Yeah. Yeah, give or take. Which is, is a crazy amount of money, but, mm. you know, they have a thing. But the 3,300, I mean, there's there's literally a handful, isn't there? There's, there's not many. The, did they a, produce many? 140. I think so no, no, that, that, that was the DX1. Well, it could be yeah, as well. Same. Yeah, I, I thought I thought they only made I thought they made less than a hundred of the thirty-three. Wow, hundred. I, I, I know it, it wasn't. It's a lot. one, yeah, but yeah. it's one of those things where yeah, you know, one person said one thing, and you never really yeah. know. But one thing I did hear was when they built them, twenty of them just went straight to Australia because they were closer and they're very heavy. I go, yeah, wow. give Australia twenty for some bizarre reason. <laughs> wow, <laughs> maybe that's where you pick up a cheap thirty-three hundred. Oh, yes. Yeah, but, yeah, but you you can get the huntsman out of the back of it if you want, mate. Yes, yeah, yeah. Don't go to Australia. Everything wants to kill you. Um, <laughs> it's not. Yeah, I've actually it, even the people. It's funny because um, yeah, even the people. <laughs> I can't talk much about it, but there is the potential that I might be going to Canberra next year, some point, on some Fairlight related business. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm sort of semi excited because it's the I love traveling it's the other side of the world and it's a fantastic country I'm also co- completely petrified because I hate spiders particularly <laughs> ones like this on your bedroom wall first thing in the morning no thank you so yeah anyway and and you're not worried about the the possible um invasion of taiwan by china at all I'm, I'm less worried about that than I am a huntsman spider, and I know a huntsman doesn't kill me. I can me, see where you're coming from, yeah. but I'm I'm seriously, you know, not worried about what's going on. If that yeah. huntsman's on my bedroom wall, I will freeze, and you'll have to come and remove me. 
Um, well, there is less chance of having a Chinese attack tank under your bed, isn't there? Well, quite. Oh, or in your slipper. <laughs> we're, we're very slightly <laughs> off topic here. So, um, yeah, yeah that, that kind of well, gonna, <laughs> brings me on to the next question, which was going to be, um, you know, what's your desert island synthesizer? I mean, would it be a 3300 flow? Or is, I mean, is there one particular instrument that if you could, you know, you only could take one synthesizer with you wherever you went, what would it be and why? Huh. That's a difficult one. That's really, really difficult. <laughs> this is why we ask the tough questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would I take, yeah, because I didn't mention the, some of the Moog, would I take mm. a mini Moog with me? Mm. Um, that would be an option as well. Yeah. Or, or would you take something that had all of it? So the pianos like and a workstation, and the strings, maybe. a workstation. Yeah. Would you take something like the Phantom instead? I wouldn't take the Phantom. I like it, but I wouldn't take the Phantom. Not that much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to think about it. Have, have a think yeah. about that one. Maybe yeah. we'll come. Maybe we'll come back to that one later on. Um, yeah, I, I've often. Yeah, we, we. I often ask our guests. You know, what's your desert island synth? And it's it's, it's often quite an interesting answer that we get because it's not the ones that you would expect i mean i would have assumed most people would have said oh yeah i'll, t I'll take a workstation because at least then i can you know write entire pieces but then some people like you like yourself just said flo you would take uh, a mini moog um because it's just an incredible instrument you can't do much on it you know in terms of well it's a simple ways of interpreting the question well, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I maybe I need to just redo my questions. I'm just yeah. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> no, How long have question. I been doing this? <laughs> um, right. So yeah, uh, let's see what other questions we have got here. Where are they? Um, no, not that one. Not that one either. Oh, sorry about this. Right, technology is getting in the way here. Um, we've asked that one. We've asked the favourite synthesizer question. Do you I like guess... the DX7? That's oh, not a bit... yes. Do you, go on. There. Do you like the DX7, the FM synths? Do you like DX7's flow? Go on. You know what the answer is. <laughs> I, oh, uh, it's not my favourite <laughs> one, if I have to be oh. honest. Uh, <laughs> sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, That's good. Everyone seems to assume that I am madly and passionately in love with DX7's. Uh, I'm just slightly attached to them. But no, it's okay. You don't have to. You your answer was much, much. Your answer was much more gentle than, than <coughs> JJ Yangzalik of Art of Noise, who just well, hated them <laughs> and, okay, and, and made all far. sorts of funny noise. Yeah, and, and hurt my feelings terribly. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were talking earlier about uh, use of expression capabilities within synthesizers, and uh, Simon in the chat wanted to know if you are, you know, do you use the, the aftertouch a lot on the Phantom? Is that something that, you know, maybe live or in your compositional work, you're you're using e expression techniques with, you know, aftertouch and so on? Um, on the Phantom, I like to use, um, I would say, more the pitch bends. Okay. Um, that's kind of um, for certain sound it really worked well um, playing with the expression as well um, that's for sure for certain sound but I have to say for example for Heaven 17 because sometimes I have playing both hands like the two yeah. keyboards so i don't always have the the opportunity like really to work on the sound specifically and to alter this sound mm -hmm. uh, with an expression so um yes it can be tricky because uh, yeah i have yeah. to play one line with one hand the other line with the other hand and i can't find yeah. anymore uh no. yes yeah uh so final question from the audience for now um because i'm sure they'll, they'll probably throw some more in there um do you prefer analog digital uh hardware software or does it not matter and is it just simply the sound that is the the most important thing to you well it would depend for the use i definitely prefer analog uh, for everything but mm -hmm. for example in my studio if i have to work on a film score or a new composition i use a lot of vst because i need sometimes i need to be fast in my work um mm -hmm. and you cannot plug in or make sure that you have the right sins for so sometimes you, yeah when i have to go fast working on a, a film score where they just want 
the next day or something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, then obviously I'm using a lot of the a lot of uh, BST and yeah, because it's just it's it's quick and yeah, absolutely yeah. yeah. Cool. Look, I, we've been grilling you for almost an hour, so we're going to just back off and let you relax for a little while. Um, and what we'll do is we'll actually talk about uh, some of the news topics. Um, there's only a few, really. Um, hang on, just bear with me a second. Alexa, light's blue. No, not going to work. Oh, there, you, there she goes. There you go. It looks a little bit better in here now because uh, it's getting darker. The sun's going down. There we go. Right. Um, let's see. What should we do? Well, I suppose the biggest news in synthesizers this week, uh, depending on your perspective, um, was this little thing. Now, um, it must have been at least a year, if not two years ago, that Korg said, we're going to produce the wave state se so the wave state was one of the, their three um sort of small digital synthesizers that they uh, came up with a few years ago there's the op 6 there's the mod wave and the wave state which is kind of the new um incarnation of korg's wave station technology from from way back in the day anyway they they announced that they were making the wave state se and this was i think it was kind of around the early t parts of the pandemic or maybe just before i'm not entirely sure but anyway it seemed to vanish into thin air and when questioned you know if you went up to a core rep at a show um they would be saying no it's, no nothing nothing's happening it's it's kind of like been put on the back burner and then of course on tuesday they announced this it is here uh, the wave state se has appeared so this is um a, a korg wave state um on steroids shall we say it's got the 61 note keyboard it's got after touch which was missing on all of those small synthesizers um it's got a metal case instead of the plastic chassis uh that's kind of about it really it's it's not a huge leap forward. It's not a, a a new version of the Wave State. And of course, the other thing that was announced was the Wave State Mark II, which was again the small thirty-seven note instrument that um, has just. I think the only difference I can find is that the polyphony has been upped from like ninety-six to one hundred and twenty-eight, or something like that. And bearing in mind that you know um, these lanes can be using uh, two voices at a time, and then you're stacking all of these. Um, your polyphony on, on these things is is quite an important thing. Um, so yeah, here we are. The Wave State SE has hit the shelves. There's two versions of it. There's the standard version, which you see there on screen, and there is also that little thing right there, which is the Platinum Edition, um, which is basically silver. Um, but it's it's here at last. We didn't think it was coming. I do actually have. Uh, for your delectation, a, a little promotion video which I shall play for you now. Korg is delighted to present the flagship WaveStay SE. Made in Japan, the WaveStay SE features Korg's premium 61 note natural touch keyboard with aftertouch for the same superb feel as Korg's high end workstations. Aftertouch provides fingertip control of the WaveStay's unique, evolving sounds. Factory performances have been updated for aftertouch and new sounds have been added as well. Under the hood, WaveState SE also features an astounding 120 stereo voices of polyphony, almost twice as many as their original WaveState, and also includes 4 gigabytes of space to import your own samples. The metal body is sleek and strong, ready for gigs and studio alike. The metal knobs have just the right weight for easy tweaking. WaveState SE is also available in a limited edition platinum finish. Both versions ship in a dedicated hard case, including space for cables and a sustain pedal. We can't wait for the WaveStay SE to elevate your playing to new heights of musical expression. I cut that short there because it just goes on a little bit. So I, I'm going to throw out a few things first of all, and then we'll just sort of go around the room and see what we all think of this. First of all, £1,900, <laughs> which is three times as much as uh just the standard wave state se uh sorry the standard wave state secondly they've thrown in a case there's how many synthesizers apart from the the very kind of special versions like you know korg have done of the 700 uh, fs and the arp 2600 
how many regular synthesizers come with a custom built case and why would you do that i don't know i'm just trying to think how you can shave some money off this 1899 price tag third third point from me why is the user interface slap bang in the middle of the keyboard with not enough space either side to put your laptop or your sandwiches it's really odd that they've stuck it in the middle now i know that this is built on a platform this is you know korg's platform synthesizer range where it's all based on the raspberry pi compute uh, module and so therefore the controls and the screen positioning uh, or you know the screen position within the user interface is going to be the same but why not put it over to the left or even over to the right so you've got a bit more space why plunk it straight in the middle and and that joystick is right there i mean you're having to reach over the keys as you're playing it's not like you know the wave station uh, originally and, and things like uh, yamaha's sy22 and so where the joystick is you know, in the region of where the the pitch bend the mod wheel is those things aside it sounds incredible it really is a, a wonderful sounding synthesizer and i've always been a big fan of of, of wave station and, and then uh, wave state um there you go that's that those are my beefs out of the way my my um things kent um you're a mod wave owner does this appeal to you at all or uh, Am I? yeah well, you were the last time oh, i yeah, looked no, yeah no yeah, i do have one, one of us yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i do have one <laughs> how yeah, do you know when you've got too many cents yeah tell me um, um, yeah. So, what, what do you think? What were your thoughts on this in general? Well, um, yeah. All right. It, it sounds lovely, um, but the the little puppy does as well. Yeah. Um, if you're itching for aftertouch, USB it to a keyboard with aftertouch. Um, you know, if you want sixty-one notes, USB it to a keyboard with sixty-one notes. Mm. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to see where in 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 the market this goes yeah and why it does have that look where um you you, you take you know a mob wave and you just go that should do it yeah cool all right lovely yeah fine um but i it's not the sound it's nothing i have real issues with the design of this yeah i have issue with where you have a flat sleek look and then you have uh aluminium uh oh sorry no, probably steel Still, um, <laughs> Allen key bolts sticking out, yes, on the end caps, right? Which are essentially folded pieces of metal stuck on the side mm -hmm. where you can catch your, your jumper or your cardigan <laughs> on and pull the bloody thing off as uh, an extension. Yeah. There's everything about the design of this is like really no, mm. no, it that look is fine if it was a little baby one like that. And it's not working for this. It really, the, the design is like, no, I'm sorry, this is yeah. poor. I'm sorry, it's poor. And, and, and the price is not helping it. Yeah, and I'm just, I was just trying to think, you know, how are they justifying the price? I mean, I know that costs have gone up in terms of manufacturing, distribution of components, that kind of stuff. And I don't know the exact um, reason for the delay. I think um, the guy at Korg USA who... Dan, I think his name is it. Dan Phillips. I've probably got that wrong, but he was on a mm. couple of shows uh, in the last couple of weeks talking about this, um, and I, I don't know exactly why it's go it's it's shooting up to like nineteen hundred pounds, and all you're essentially getting is aftertouch. Oh, it's also got um, note release sensitivity. So you've got velocity sensitivity and note release sensitivity. So that's another element of expression, and I'm all about mm -hmm. that. I, I, I like that. But it's it's like sticking that control surface in the middle. So we, when, we, when we've talked about these in the past, we've always compared them with modal synthesizers, and particularly the modal platform, uh, which is the Argon 8, the Cobalt 8, and soon to be the Carbon 8. And on their 61 note versions, they they kept the control surface or the UI over to the left hand side of the keyboard. So you could plonk your MacBook or uh, an iPad with the controller app running on that empty space of keyboard. So mm. obviously they're trying to stick to a platform design and put it into a large keyboard. But why not just shift everything over to the left a little? It's just really weird. I, and the I, case I, thing I, I don't just get it. baffles me. Yeah. So. 
but that said, inside, I mean, the synth itself sounds incredible. It's really, really good. Yeah, I've got it, the software it does, version. It does ring of that sort of like get twice the synth, play three times as much. I know it's just it's bonkers. I'm, sorry, I'm not getting that. Yeah. And so, so, yeah. This is a synth. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's a uh-huh. synth that's been designed by a marketing department, not a it looks musician. Looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah. It it's been designed by a graphic designer who, when you look at the layout, it looks very pretty. Aesthetically, it's very pleasing, but it's absolutely awful to play. It's it's in the wrong place. The fact you've got to reach over the keyboard to get to the joystick. That means you've got your arm stretch, which means you have less control. The kind of articulation you get from a from a, 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 a panning stick is, is is something where you want to have your hand close to you, close mm. to your body, to give you that that fine degree of control. Um, and it's it's taking up a lot of room, right smack bang in the centre. As you say, there's nowhere to put it except. You know, if you put that to the left or to the right, but preferably to the left, you yeah. could be playing and controlling much more easily. I, I don't get this at all. Mm. And and as Kent said, it's something which go and buy a wave state and plug it in via USB to any of your keyboards of choice and get the same controls. You may not get the polyphony, but guess what? You can connect two of them up. Yeah. You know, it and it's still cheaper. I can only think. I mean. When Ty was on last week or the week before, whenever, mm-hmm. we, we, we revisited the theme of, of desirability in a synth. There are some synths, we, I think we were talking about the Oberheim desktop. The Oberheim keyboard is something I lust after. I want it, I need it in my life because it's clearly been designed by someone that plays it. All the controls are where you want them and the whole experience of playing it is wonderful. The desktop version, you don't have the keyboard and those controls, so it's not anything like as desirable. That's what this is. It's yeah. not desirable. I can only think the reason they've included a case is to try and justify the price by saying, well, it's it's £200 to make a case, and it's not. Yeah. It's it, not. It just it strikes me as a really odd it's, decision. But by the way, it does sound amazing, but yes, then so does that's the... That's its saving grace, is that... So does the wave... T- you know, the, 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 the modular one, the, the latest version, sounds mm. amazing. So for about £150, you can buy the wave state plug-in, and it's essentially... It's identical, because it's a, that synthesizer is just a Raspberry Pi computer running software. So apart from the, the obviously, the um, digital to um, analog converters... It's, it's identical and you've then got a massive screen you can attach whatever controller you like whether it's synth action weighted after touch you know you can even get joystick controllers to you know to, to do that I'd, I'd be interested to know if that uh, i can't do this backwards that little baby up there the yamaha sy22 which was, was of course the forebear to the wave station both designed by dave smith um i want i wonder if the joystick on that would work but here's the thing, here's, to back up my argument or complaint, should I say, about this, this whole user interface. So um, the very first one of these digital, Korg digital synths that um, came into our periphery was the OP6, which is their FM version. And when they teased that at NAM, which was a few years, it was, before, it was pre-pandemic NAM, um, they showed a 61-note version of that and guess where the user interface is? It's not in the middle. It's over to the left. And if you look at that UI, it's almost identical to what the actual production model, the 37 key version, was. So it's not like it can't be done. So if somebody from Korg turns around and says, yeah, we put it in the middle because blah, blah, blah. Marketing. Whatever. Again, I don't Graphic get it. Graphic design. And it's not like there's a problem with having synthesizers with control surfaces that are not symmetrical. And the other thing which I think is really interesting about this, uh, the sounds are clearly good. They have made some updates to the the sound engine. It does do more. This would seem to be the perfect candidate with everything it does for poly aftertouch, right? It really does. Mm, Yeah. And with poly aftertouch at that money... I might think, do you know what? But, you know, there are so many other synths out there that can do so much. You yeah. know, I'd, I'd, just go and buy, I'd just go and buy the module and plug it into any well, one of my other... Well, if you were going to release that again, 
and you were going to do the the thirty seven note version of that of yep. this SE. Mm-hmm. Um, the boards were already done and the right size to fit into the thirty seven case. Hence, all the controls are stuck in the centre, so you don't have to redo the boards. But surely, if the boards, oh, I, sp- I suppose, yeah, there's probably going to be cables. Yeah, yeah. So you'd have yes. whole different sets of boards. So you'd have everything on one board. Yeah. So make it all in one board. Put it on but the big keyboard, and then sell it on the other one later. Again, this is where Modal seem to have got it right because they didn't. You know, their 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 UIs on the on the the bigger versions of their synths were on the left. So they clearly had that in mind, and I think that this is a an afterthought, and maybe that's that's what it is. It's it's very strange. Anyway, look, I'm, I'm come on, Flo. Come on, yeah, come you, on, you, what, come on. As a Get keyboard performer, Gloves on, girl. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on. What do you think okay. of this? Do you do you like the sound of it? What do you think about this, this user interface thing? Yeah, what what are your thoughts? Well, it sounds. I haven't tried it, obviously, but mm-hmm. like it sounds. It sounds really good. Mm. The, the thing I would say is that this, you know, just I'm thinking purely live as well. Is mm-hmm. like like you said, everything like is there in the middle, but the, there's this little tiny screen. <laughs> tiny screen and yeah. i would like i would it would not be like something nice when you have to perform live and you have to try to see what's happening uh there yeah so this you know it's little details but like also kind of things that you want to think about <laughs> yeah absolutely and the thing is with with wave state um and the, the whole you know has these multiple lanes of uh, wavetables and sounds that are going through this wave sequencing as you say on that little screen it's just a series of dots it's I, I looked at it and I was just I had, I'm not in, I can't even interpret that the, the saving grace is that there is an editor which is uh, free of charge and that you can run on a Mac and a PC and I'm not sure if it works on mm. iOS I'm sure somebody will tell us in the chat if it does but here again is another missed opportunity. If you move that user interface over to the left and you want a more detailed view, you can plonk your laptop on that empty space that's on the on on the right hand side of the keyboard. So yeah. and you know you see um, you know modal Cobalt eight and Argon eight users, you know with the the larger versions doing exactly that. You know it's mm. it's a very odd. I, I'm sure there's reasons, and I'd love to to look, to know what they are, but. It seems a, a, an awful lot of money for for not much more. Marketing you know? department, graphic it, designer. It does, yeah, oh, it does scream it. of it's, the bean counters, doesn't it? It mm. does, which is a shame because it and is, it is the technology is great. I've always loved the Wave Station from when they mm. first came out. I just thought, oh, what a glorious sound! You know, mm. what a yeah. what a great way of working with these things. So yeah, um, I remember when I was at David Vorhouse's studio, he still got his. Um, original wave station keyboard and sitting on top of it was one of these um, uh, glove controllers and we didn't have the time that it, uh, he promised me that if I went back to the studio he would show me how he was manipulating the wave station with this um, glove con- I forget what the name of the glove controller is I know it's the same one that Imogen Heap uses but yeah I mean in- incredible yeah. synthesizers yeah really cool sounds but yeah, just such an odd decision, and it's so disappointing because when they originally teased it and said, "Yeah, we're, this this will be coming," everybody got really excited, and now it's here, and everyone's like, "Really?" Yeah. I, I can't. There's not many people. I don't think I've actually heard anyone say, "Yep, yeah, I'm having one of those. I'm going to get one of those." Mm. They're either complaining about the, the size of the screen, as, as Flo said, they're complaining about the placement of the UI, they're complaining about the price mostly. Um, <laughs> but there you go. It's it's an odd decision, but. It's available now. Um, so that's WaveState SE um, and regular and platinum editions. Don't forget, there's also WaveState Mark II in the standard version, the 37 key version, which apparently, as far as I can tell, the only real difference is uh, voice count, which has gone from like 96 to 120, I believe, are the figures. Um, I can live with that. What's the price on that? Do you know? Uh, they're about 600, 699, <gasps> I think. Depending on where you get it from, so you know what I think. I think the, la- the last keyboard that I, uh, I think, that was sold with a case, was the um, the Roly Seaboard, the Grand. Mm. It does tend to be with you know specialist boutique type 
Like Korg have done it with the the 700 FS yeah. because it's a classic reproduction. They've done it with the 2600 FS. I mean that comes in cases within a, a wheeled case as well. I mean it's a, it's a, they've not yeah. skimped on that. I just don't get it with this. You know this is it's a regular. You know it's kind of how to say a regular keyboard. But <laughs> like you say, maybe it's just thrown in for the price. Anyway, I've got I got, I got a paper. case with my Bosendorfer. <laughs> <laughs> a case of what? A bad back. Yeah, yeah, oh, pretty much. What, the suitcase of money you had to hand over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I only yeah, ever course. rented it. But... Oh, oh, you rent, you cheapskate. That, was, that wasn't the case. That was a crate. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, anyway, right. let's, let's move on. Let's move on because um, we're, we're, we're only, we haven't got much to go through. But the, this next one is going to redeem. It, the, now you're going to see positive Rob. Okay. Oh, so, okay. positive me. Um I have been, uh, have become, should I say, uh, over the last um, 12 to 18 months, a big fan of a particular company that have made some, what I think are really ingenious, intuitive, fun, sometimes complicated, um, but really cool pieces of gear. And they didn't start off with the machines that they currently produce. They started off with a, a machine called the, uh, the ELZ-1. And I, I, they kind of flew under my radar. Now I'm wishing that I'd got one because they're, they're really cool instruments. However, they are coming back with a new version, an updated version. It's called the ELZ-1 Play. Let's have a little look. That is the new ELZ-1 Play. Uh, to give you a bit of background, so this was Sonicware's first instrument, and it all of a sudden just appeared everywhere that you, you looked. It was on stage with bands. Uh, it was in studios. It was in people's backpacks. It was just one of these things. I, kept, I remember seeing it loads of times on, um, like, Jules Holland. Bands would be playing live, and they'd have a little one of these, and they'd just be doing little things with it. And I'm like, what is that thing? It looks really, really odd. But it sounds incredible. And it was their first synthesizer. And then they focused on their live and range. I was, was going to try and grab one. Uh, there you go. So these things, which is their, their live and range, which are kind of combinations of synthesizers and, and beat, you know, sort of groove boxes, that kind of stuff. Um, and they focused on that because component shortages and prices meant that building the ELZ1 was um, just not financially viable. They then went on and did the sample trek, which we all know and love. We've spoken about it lots on the show. And then 
just about a week or two ago, the the, the guy behind Sonicware, Dr. Yu Endo, um, in Yu Endo, um, so it just fell flat, that joke, didn't it? Know, I, yeah, sorry, tumbleweed in the background. Um, I was, but no, I was he's still going. Did you did, did you just say you? I did up? just say that. Yeah. So Doctor Yu <laughs> um, posted a picture a couple of weeks ago of like a, a, a printed circuit board, and everyone was going, "Oh, that looks kind of ELZ one. Are they actually going to bring it back into production? Because lots of people, including myself, really, really, really want one." And it turns out that he is um, bringing it back, but he's going to call it the ELZ one Play. And it's actually going to come out initially as his own personal project. So this is not a Sonicware product. This is a Dr. Uendo project. And it's uh, basically he's, he's calling this thing the Doctor's Journey. And this is uh, episode one of the Doctor's Journey. Mm -hmm. um, he's taken the ELZ one. He's taken on a lot of feedback from the original instrument and then built that in. So, for example, uh, if you look on the original instrument there, it's got a speaker, which is a traditional... Uh, sonic wear design uh, just there little built-in speaker so those speakers have now been put into the end cheeks so you've created a bit more surface space uh, for controls as you saw in that video there's um, a four track looper now built in with a with a pretty hefty capacity in terms of uh, notes that you can put in there um, it already had something like 14 or 15 different synthesis engines it's now got a drum engine as well which uh, is compatible with the sample track so you can go and sample your drum kits in the sample track and save them as stk files and then upload them into into the elz1 and vice versa i guess um yeah just loads of it's 14 synth engines 26 effects algorithms uh and then you know this this new four track looper uh, and those the, the engines range from you know fm 8-bit there's this really interesting one that I can't wait to try. It's called the Sand Flute, which extracts and generates a tone from noise. I don't quite know how it does it, but I'm really, really interested in how it how it does some you know, some of this stuff. And then you've got standard, you know, sort of waveform uh, type synthesis in there. Nice little screen, very quite a tiny screen, but it's um, like the one they had before. You know, it's a color screen um, with lots of information on it. In terms of connectivity. Um, standard TRS um, line outs at the back. You've got um, sync in and sync out, so you can hook it up to, to other Sonicware gears or, or gear uh, Volkers or anything that has the sync connection. There's audio input, um, which you can use um, and process external audio through that. It's got standard 5 pin MIDI. Uh, it's got USB C, which is for data and MIDI as well, headphone jack. Um, and yeah, see the speakers are just now built into these little end cheeks there, and it all comes in a very nice compact price, uh, sorry compact unit. Um, so in terms of price, it's five hundred and ninety nine US. Uh, shipping is free in the US, the EU, and the UK. And what's happening is you has gone out and pre ordered or you know committed to two hundred of these being made. He funded that himself, so they will get made. If you want to pre-order one of those, you can do so right now on um, the website, which has been posted in the chat if you want to have a, a quick go there. Um, scheduled to ship sequentially in, in the order that they were ordered uh, in October and also available as a black edition. So everything is black. There's no black keys or anything like that. Um, so you can pick and choose whether you the, the standard version or the black version. Um, I'm dead excited about this for two reasons number one i always wanted an elz1 and never got the chance number two one of these is going to be arriving here and hopefully mm. a little bit before release so um really really excited and we're going to get chris doddsworth back on the show around that time to to do uh, a run through because he knows all about that there's going to be 200 so if you want one of these uh, get in there quickly um so there's, there's i mean the specs are incredible for something like this some people I see in the, in the chat are saying, oh, it's, you know, it's kind of like a, a teenage engineering OP1. Well, it, it kind of is, but it's like 10 times less in terms of the cost. Um, but yeah, ELZ1 is back. Um, Flo, I mean, we, we, we spoke about earlier about um, your Desert Island synth and you, know, you thought about maybe a mini mode, but something like this that you could stick in, you know, in your rucksack that can do everything, would that appeal to you at all? It is really a pain. Yes, yes. I would, uh, I would definitely love to try it uh, because it's 
really it's so tiny but it mm. seems to you can do so many things with it yeah so uh that's really appealing and the sounds sounds really as well interesting yeah. so um yes i could put that in my backpack definitely yeah <laughs> It, it does seem to be like a, a, a real kind of traveling synth as well as a you know performance thing. I've seen, I say, I've seen so many people play with these live on stage, and I'm not just talking, you know, people like us, big name bands are, are using these uh, these sorts of things. Um, anybody else excited about this, boys? Um, well, you, you quite like the demo, didn't you? Uh, very much. I mean, the thing is, it's it's portable and modular. And I've always liked those things, just sort of kicking around some ideas when you're waiting at an airport or you're doing, you know, you're traveling. If you're on tour or if you're, you know, where, or you're on holiday, it doesn't matter where. I always mm. like having a something. I had some of the early sort of Yamaha portable things just to write. And they were a pain. But it gave me something to get frustrated over and shout <laughs> at when I, was, when I was in an airport lounge. This looks a lot much, uh, a lot better. Um, I mean, 14 sound engines. I know there are some issues with it. It's five nine nine dollars, but the but the issues are things like it's it's got FM, but I don't think that's not for, an issue. That's a benefit. It is, it's four, <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. The fact is, it's got FM. Four operators, which means really, really, you get some really good stuff. Doesn't no. have any envelopes. You can't modulate with envelopes. But no. that to one side, all the rest of it, I could write a whole bundle of stuff now. And it's got SD cards, so you can save stuff. It's got yep. audio in, so you can sample and do what you like. Um, it's, it's, I think it's astonishingly good. And I don't. Uh, the the criticism I've seen from various quarters has been that it sounds like a Game Boy or something. It sounds too electronic. It can, but as we just heard in the demo, there are some lovely sounds mm. in there. And so I'm, I'm, I'm. I think this is something that I kind of I want. I'm lusting after. Yeah, definitely. I am a bit. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm really looking for. So you know, here's, here's the sample yeah. track, which was their their last um, piece of gear, and I love this. It's great. You know, it's like like um, the ELZ one, battery operated. If you want it to be, but it can also be mains powered. And I I'm just thinking, you know, that and this. What more would you want? I mean, you've got 15 synthesis engines. You've got all of this stuff going on in here. I mean, it's just... You've only got six notes polyphony, though. Yeah, but how much, how much do you need? How much do you need? <laughs> um, I, I can only play... I mean, I can't play with ten fingers, so six is fine. The uh, other thing I forgot to mention... The, the other thing I forgot to mention is that all the keys on this now... So, you know, these keys, it's the same sort of things on the new ELZ1 Play are velocity sensitive. They weren't on the original, so they've now got velocity sensitivity. So that's that's not bad. That's not bad. And it's I suppose not... if you want polyphony, you can play a chord, put it in the looper, bang. Well, do you know what? I mean, go. we've argued about this, but not you and I personally, but do you remember when the Polybrute came out? That, yeah, that thing there, six right? notes. Six note polyphony, and people lost their minds. Oh, my God, how are you going to do six notes? Why couldn't they do at least eight? I've never, ever, in all my time playing that, ever thought, "Oh, look, I've just lost a note," you know. Or and it's and it's now widely regarded as one as of one... the the best modern day synthesizers. It's yep. just an astonishing instrument. So yeah, it's and I think that looper is great because I'm, I'm yeah I'm getting into loops because I've just got you know I'm getting into Ableton now. And I'm thinking I, everything I think about now is is loop based. We've lost him to the dark side. Yeah. Lost him yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I just, I got so excited about this. And no, not just because of the FM, but that, you know, that's nice. But it's all the other, because I'm, I'm really getting into physical modeling again, uh, particularly with things like chromophone and all that kind of stuff. And to see stuff like the sand flute, which just the name makes me think, God, that must be interesting. A sand flute? What on earth is that? I can't wait to try that out. Uh, it's got a granular engine in there as well, and because granular is kind of you know a flavor de jour um, in terms of you know synthesizer engines, just like so. Yeah, I, I, and this I think knocks stuff like the OPZ or the OP1 into a cocked hat because this is a whole bunch of stuff for not a lot of money, really, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Ken, so, some people have been mentioning the SH4 and saying that's going, you know, and it's a good, no. the SH4 is a good thing. 
this is just completely different. Yeah. And it, and it feels like something that I'd want to play. I mean, I'm really interested. Flo, does this, is this something now you've seen it and you know you can take it with you, battery powered, stick it in your backpack, and if you're sat at an airport, you can be bapping away. Is it something that interests you? Yeah, definitely, because when you said that, I just saw myself, like, at the airport with that in my backpack. <laughs> so this is something, yeah, or yeah. Yeah, on the plane, like, doing something. Because it's something you want to do, like, you want to have on the go, and you have the sounds and all the modular things, and uh, yes, um, mm. it sounds perfect. I, I just, I'm just really curious, so I might just try it as well <laughs> yeah yes because i think yeah, yeah, yeah. with the addition of the sd card on this I, I i don't know if you can i'm sure you can now so anything you create in that looper should be savable to the sd card because a lot of these smaller instruments once you've come up with a really cool groove and, and loop, when you turn the thing off it's gone so you kind of got to get so the fact that you can create stuff store it move on do something else i think that's that's very cool as well kent come to you my friend uh, yeah. you like your big keyboards and stuff but uh <laughs> does this interest you at all well when you I, when you sent me the link to this and i fired up the page and i went oh god it's another one of these little things okay whatever and played the video and everything like that and as the video continued of going I really want one of these. <laughs> <laughs> However, yeah. I will say this. I, because you know me, I can't walk away without making at least one criticism. Go on. Right. The video. <laughs> um, you can always take another take with the video. So maybe <laughs> next time do another take and this time either Tonight. quantize it or play it in time. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> the drums. <laughs> oh. Oh. I, I'm listening to it going, oh, every now and again, oh, uh, oh. Uh. I know. <laughs> yeah? Do you know what I mean? Because you, know, you, know, you know when you do this thing, you do something with a loop and you blah, 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 and then there's just this one track that's not right, and you go, no, I'm ignoring it, I'm ignoring it. I'm ignoring it. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> do it again, do it again. And it was that. But other yeah. than that, yeah. I really liked it. And I'm all, all for, I'm all for those keyboards where you go, I'm going to, oh, do you know what, I'm knackered. I'm taking this to bed, headphones. And, yeah, yeah. There's, there is a great video uh, on YouTube of someone in the UK. I think they, they climbed up a mountain somewhere in Wales. I, I, I might be wrong. And they, they took their original e, um, ELZ-1 up to this mountaintop at sunrise. Mm. And they're doing this wonderful ambient jam you know it's very eno-esque you know lots of mm. big washy things as the sun and they've the, they've set the camera up just here and the sunrise is over there and he's just sat there with his with his knees up with this and he's just live playing this thing and for me that's like heaven if i look out of my window i see a brick wall um it's not very inspiring so you know to be able to take something up to the top of a mountain and watch the sunrise and and just make some music to that thing i kind of like that Going, yeah. knees up, mother brand. Knees up, up. <laughs> no, not going to work. Sorry. No, no. I'm, I'm super excited about this. I really am, and I'm so glad. And the, the final thing I want to mention is that, and, and I said this to, um, Taka, the, uh, the marketing guy at, at Sonicware yesterday. I said, first of all, you, you're going to sell all of these, no problem at all. Um, you, you know, the, the feedback that I've seen already, you're going to sell all two hundred. Hmm. And he said, if we sell all 200, then very likely it will then move into the Sonicware full product range and become, you know, a, a, a proper product, you know, production product. Hmm. But at the moment, it's this kind of, you know, they're, I think it's a really clever way of doing things, you know. Just test the water. Yeah, exactly. So, Doc, you know, he comes up with, you know, 200 of them. Let's see how they go, get some feedback, and then put it into production without so doing my a Kickstarter. My one, my one thing, and I am just, you know, to be the, the voice of dissension, I, I love it and I want it and I really do want it more so than, 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 than some others. But then I'm looking again, now that people are mentioning this in the chat and elsewhere, the Roland SH4, uh, 4D, mm. 60 voices, so similar thing, you know, it's 60 voices. Yeah. And, you know, it's, 
then you start thinking, well, you know, if I was on top of whatever, and you know, a mountain, and I've got 60 voices, I could get the whole bloody <laughs> orchestration, I could do everything with that. So it, it's just, it's not, and, and it's not being sold as that, it's being sold as a, as a different thing. And I, I just like the engines on it. I like the mm. fact it's got lots of engines. And I also like, I like being constrained when composing. Yeah. There is something... Yeah. Restriction will make you a little bit more creative. It yeah. does. It yeah. does. So, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that into Yeah, that. yeah. No, I think it's good. One, one course, question. Oh, yeah, one question. I, yeah, you yeah. might not be able to answer this. When you say six-note poly, this is not including the use of the looper, is it? No, the looper is electronic. It's it's playback, as far as I can see. So Yeah. So it's I, audio playback? It's not using the synth engine itself. Oh, now that's a very... I don't Because yeah. if it isn't... Good question, then. <laughs> you could use up your six voices very quickly with, like, two tracks. Well, uh, clearly that's done. not the case because be. in, in the video that we saw, yeah. there was four elements in that looper and then he was playing lots of stuff on top of it. So that... that I'm just trying to... Whistle. Which suggests audio recording. Let's have a look. Uh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. I will ask. I, um, well, unless they're lying about the polyphony, of course. Yeah. I'll speak to them. So, no, no actually, no, you, you say six voices. Maximum polyphony is 15. Oh, well, oh really? 15 well, voices, go. depending on the synth engine. So, I guess some synth engines will use up more uh, oh, or less. Okay. More so, complex. Maximum poly, 15 poly. voices. Number of sound memories, um, which is you know, patch memories, 512. So, four banks of 128. Um, you can right. store three samples of up to five seconds at 16 bit 48k WAV uh, standard in there. And I'm just trying to see looper, four track looper, one touch recording overdubbing, uh, recording from the built in sound source line input, and all USB. Yeah, that's another thing. Y you can record audio from the line input or the USB audio input into the looper as well. So if you want to do a little vocal refrain oh, in there, you could do that. Um, free function automatically sets the number of bars according to the recording time. One shot playback doesn't actually say whether it's um, a MIDI or an audio based. I think looper. we'd have to buy ours after the show flow. Mm, no, yeah. There's no point in waiting, is there? <laughs> Can we get a discount if we, buy, if we buy in bulk? There we go. Yes, nice. let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> there, is, there is one thing, though, I will say that yeah, at the bottom... Universe. Uh, of the web page or bottom of the the, the, the article, it's um, they're only making two hundred, and then they make they want to make sure that the people that buy these are individuals rather than people saying buying, you know, fifty and then selling them onto their friends. Well, they want right, to get these in. Full. Well, yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> but they they, de they want these to go into the hands of people that are actually going to going to use them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just I just think this is dead cool. I really do. Mm. Um, and Sonicware are rapidly becoming one of my favourite synthesizer companies ever. Um, they just do some great things. So we'll report back on that. I'll um, I'll try and get some clarification on the loop of whether it's audio based or MIDI based. Mm. Um, I'm I'm leaning towards audio um, because just of the of the, the density of some of those demos. Yeah. But if you want to know what you know, if you want to hear what this thing does, just go and check out some regular ELZ one uh, videos on YouTube. There's loads of them. It's a really really cr cracking little synth. Mm. <sighs> right, um, one more piece of news. It's not really a piece of news. It's a gentle reminder um, because last week we were, yeah, the big topic of discussion was um, in music's acquisition of Moog Music. Um, and that caused, you know, lots of um, comments and, and uh, opinions to be bandied around. Of course, we were joined by the wonderful Michelle Moog Kusa, Bob's daughter, um, who explained the, the, you know, the position of the Bob Moog Foundation. Uh, which is a completely separate entity uh, to Moog Music. And um, the, the one thing she really did want to get across was the fact that they have a raffle where you can buy a ticket or tickets and be in with a chance of owning um, your own uh, serial number one 2022 Mini Moog Model D. So here's one for you, Flo. You said you like the Mini Moog. Mm -hmm. Buy a ticket. It's only twenty bucks, which is about fifteen pounds yeah. in in today's uh, money. Um, you can buy one ticket. Uh, you can buy six tickets, which will cost you a hundred bucks. You can buy fourteen tickets, which will cost you two hundred bucks. 
or you can buy a 40 ticket bundle which will set you back 500 US dollars but you can buy as many of those bundles as you wish and of course the more bundles you buy um, the more chance you have of winning except you won't because none of you are going to win I'm going to win this no you're not um, pardon? no Sorry? you're not no you're not yes I am I yeah, bought 20 I I... tickets today <sighs> another 20 yeah jeez anyway Did you, and um, you I noticed... already have a 74 yes you've got an original RA even... Jesus. Hey, I'm supporting the museum. That is, yeah. It's not about winning the, the move. This is this is true. <laughs> if you believe um, that. If you um, want to see what this thing looks like and hear what it sounds like, let, let me give you a, a small taste. So I'm standing here with a reissue of the iconic... Model D Mini Moog. This is serial number one of the 2022 reissue by Moog Music that has been graciously donated by our friends at Moog Music to the Moog Foundation. So this is a piece of history and it is a beautiful, beautiful machine. Yeah. There you go. So you can win that very machine and Moog will ship it to you wherever you live in the world if you're the winner um, they did one recently signed by Geddy Lee they've, they've had others signed by other great people this is serial number one of the the new Model D which has got uh, to some people's consternation a sprung loaded pitch bend which of course it never originally had oh, it looks, that off. looks a lovely thing it really mm -hmm. does and I promised Michelle that I would give them uh, one last plug because people you have until midnight eastern time US so that's five o'clock in the morning UK time mm. and whatever it is in whatever part of the world you live in um, but it's 12 o'clock eastern daylight time in the United States this closes so get get your tickets now get in with a chance and if you win this and you're a viewer here we'll get you on the show to, to show us it and of course that's going to happen because it's, I'm going to win it I'm, it's going to be, it's going to be it. it's going to I'm be. winning it well it doesn't matter it's supposed to be. Okay. the penguin so, of death is winning it oh, the oh, penguin of death. Yeah, well we can't argue with the penguin of death I'm sorry yeah. indeed so there you go um, please go and buy your tickets and it's just basically go to bobmogfoundation.com and then it's, it's the link at the, at the top of the page I am sure one of our brilliant moderators has already thrown the link. Yes, Ben, there you go. Ben's thrown it in there. Where is Andy tonight? Not Andy Synthetic, but Andy Brooks. He doesn't seem to be around. He's not well. He's normally around here. Um, hope he's well. If you're watching, Andy, hello. Uh, where are you? You're supposed to be working. Come on. You didn't call in sick. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, go and do that. Buy tickets now. Win with a chance of winning a very, very lovely mini Moog. Right. Um, we've got about... 15 minutes left so i'm going to come back to you flo um before we came on the show you told us that you are taking a a break from touring with heaven 17 you're going to be back with them in november yes. do you want to tell us why that might be <laughs> well yes i'm expecting <laughs> a little boy it's, oh so, it's a boy oh excellent yeah, yeah congratulations yeah. from everyone here thank you thank you so yes um so, i will Take, I will be taking a break just a little bit. Well, yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, um, obviously, you're going to be going back on the road. So if, you said you, I think, it's due in about three weeks? Yes. Yep. So let me, let me do my maths in July, August, September. So you're going to be going back on the road sort of like four or five months afterwards. That's Are you, are you going to be taking the little one with you? Or? I haven't worked out all the details yet. <laughs> I was just imagine you know, singing backing vocals uh, with, with Heaven 17, yeah. little baby. Um, so whilst you're off the road um, and, you know, doing the very important stuff, how are you going to keep your hand in musically? Will you be taking a break completely from that or are you still going to be doing composing? Have you got anything um, planned for your time off? Well, obviously, yes. I cannot stay well. <laughs> I will see. I'm not making any plans, like if really plans, plans, because apparently you don't have to like, don't make plans mm -hmm. because you don't know how it's going to be like. Uh, but I know myself and I know that I need to be creative. So um, 
I know that I will need to get to a keyboard or a synth or a piano and do some music. Uh, but I'm working on a short film as well. So, okay. So, um, so I'm going to be doing that in between. Excellent. Hmm, so, excellent. So, well, well, just well. to let the maternity stuff. Just so, to yes. let you know, there's lots of people <clears throat> in the chat room uh, sending in uh, congratulations there from Steve Elbows, <laughs> uh, round of applause from Asio Head there, um, uh, our wonderful friend Matt. Wonderful news, many congratulations, Ian Cracknell, congratulations, round of applause there from Jason Crouch, Paul Artola getting in on the act there, um, mini future synth nerd incoming, uh, Dr. Synth there, uh, congratulations, Wagyu, congrats, there are lots of great uh, compliments coming in, we wish you the very best of luck with that, um, that's a, yeah, is this, is this your first by the way? It is. Oh, exciting, exciting. <laughs> Make the most of it now, because they grow up and they get smelly, or smellier, and noisier, and louder, uh-huh. and more. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. I still am. Well, yeah. Look at the shirt. <laughs> Wait, talk it up, Robbie. I know. No, it's no, that's what I'm saying. Make the most of it when they're young and they can't talk back. Yeah, that's always the best bit. Anyway, um, so congratulations okay. on that. Um, and so you're back on the road with Heaven Seventeen in November. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about what that tour is all going to be about? So yes, what are we going? So um, we let's just wait a second. I got cut a little bit. Oh, oops, sorry. Yes, I'm back. Oh, uh, we go, it's the, uh, sorry, sorry about that. My connection is a bit not really the best today. Um, 40 years of the luxury gap, uh, 40 years of temptation. Years. So we just wow. gonna yes, um, gonna play all these tracks and well, I'll leave it as so. It's the 40 years of the luxury gap. That's for uh-huh. sure, and for the rest, we'll see. Leave a bit of suspense and surprise to see what's going to happen. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, and that's touring around the UK, yeah? Yeah, the UK. Um, I think we have, I don't know how many dates we have, but uh, maybe 12, 15. Here you go. 12, I've said. just found them. Let's throw these up on the screen for everyone. I highly recommend going to see a Heaven 17 gig. Because they are, it's an incredible value for money. Uh, and it's, you know, I mean, Glenn is such a character, such a presence on stage. And Martin is, you know, we, I mean, we, we know and love Martin. He's been on the show a couple of times. Um, we're huge, huge fans and massive respect to that guy for, for everything he's ever done uh, yes. for, for music and electronic music. And, you know, um, so, yeah, uh, we got uh, O2 Academy Leeds, 2nd of uh, November, Boiler Shop Newcastle on the 3rd, Academy Liverpool on the 4th. Um, I'm imagining that's probably Glasgow. Then you've got Manchester, Bournemouth, Bristol, Northampton, um, De La War Pavilion. I'm not sure where that is. Shepherd's Bush O2. And you're coming to my neck of the woods, Nick Rain's LCR in Norwich. So I'm hopefully going to be coming up to that. Yes. And then Sheffield as well. Of course, the last gig in the tour in the hometown mm, of Heaven 17, good. which is going to be yeah. incredible. And also, uh, Heaven 17 have just announced that they're going to be joining uh, Soft Cell and ABC in Brighton soon as well, which is, that would be a hell of a gig. And the thing is, those tickets, temptation. Oh. <laughs> I think that deserves a... <laughs> I nearly oh, gave dude. it one yeah, of my on. buttons. Oh, no, don't want to do that. <laughs> Seriously, though, no. if you've not seen Heaven 17 live go, you will have an absolute whale of a time. The band are tight as a tight yeah. thing. The and I want to say, thing. yeah, Glenn was such a great stuff. So he'd just say all these stories and really about all their creative process how they yeah. put the songs and so that's really something as well the music is yeah. great but the way he he tells uh things as well yeah it's a it's a fully engaging show and it's it's yeah they, they're really they're worth every mm-hmm. penny of what you pay so please do go and see them and um i don't know if, when was it he martin wore his um outfit from clockwork orange 
because of course that's where the, the the name from the band comes from is clockwork orange you know the heaven 17 yeah, and yeah. he wore the the outfit that um uh what's the actor's name i forget it's gone completely out of my head mcdowell mcdowell that's it yeah. um and you know, the big jacket with the massive lapels and martin walked on stage this was a couple of years ago in that that outfit and he looked incredible yeah really very well dressed man is martin every time i've met him he's like so well dressed um so yeah please do go and see heaven 17 when they're touring again and uh, you can give flow away from the crowd and and uh, wait come and buy a pro synth network t-shirt and then be able to pick us out from the audience um and if you're coming to norwich i will hopefully see you there yes um so pro synth that's network t-shirt i know well actually we need to get some we need to sort these out because our provider uh isn't providing anymore <laughs> so um, we are yeah. we're trying to get some of these sorted out uh, so i know a lot of you are, are, are wanting these and um, we're, we're looking to get more merchandise um so yeah um i noticed somebody asked in the the chat so i'm gonna i don't want to ignore i think it was wagyu might have asked um about the pet shop boys and i went to see them on saturday night uh last week again oh, if you want to go and see a, a great electronic band live go and see the pet shop boys it's all the hits it's all killer no filler um they even do paninara so chris does his vocal thing um and i was i was busy gear spotting and luckily i had a fairly elevated view and i was mostly disappointed to see that they're all using native instruments controllers and everything is is in software <laughs> everything there's you know no emulators no fair lights no ppgs none of that stuff anymore so uh, yeah, native but instruments that's controllers <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you get the chance, if you do actually get the chance to go and see them, and you don't take that chance, then it's a sin. Oh, oh he's full of them tonight. Isn't he? <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to push one of these buttons in a minute. <sighs> now I have, to, I have to say, whenever I go to a gig, I go to the merch stand and always come away disappointed because they don't have any. T they never make T-shirts for for gentlemen of a certain figure. Um, but what I did get the petrol boys. What the hell's that mean? I got my bucket hat. Look, I got my dream world oh. bucket hat. Yay! <laughs> so I was I was made up uh, with that. So uh, yeah, uh, there, there they are. Look, I had them miniaturised and they're stuck there. Also saw Peter Gabriel on Monday. Oh, um, he was incredible. Really, really good. And even in the O2, the O2, the sound in the O2 is legendarily, legendarily awful. Not with Peter Gabriel, it's not. He must either pay the best sound engineers or bring in the best rigs. It sounded brilliant. He borrowed my wall. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Did you? So you saw him, you, you didn't see him virtually. You saw him in the real world. Oh. Honest, <laughs> honestly, okay. I'm going to reach, I'm reaching for this button. Yeah, I, I'm just going to drop, actually, I, I could, I could, seriously. I think it is. <laughs> But no, um, again, Peter Gabriel, apparently, I found out today, has, has actually said this, this probably will be his last tour, which is what I had assumed, and therefore why I spent a huge amount of money to sit very high up in the O2, which was a little bit scary. I was literally the very back row. Wow. Um, but not right at the very back. I was kind of like halfway around the side. Um, but it was still incredibly good. And for, the, uh, for an hour before the show... They, it's obviously a projection, but it, they have a guy drawing the hands of a clock so that every minute he wipes the hand and then draws the next one. And it really made the time pass very quickly because he's just sat there fascinated with this guy painting a hand on them, wiping it off and then painting another one. It was great. Um, but yeah, Peter Gabriel was utterly brilliant. He played his entire new album, which is a very brave thing for any wow. artist to do these days, mm. is to um, play... Every, and he only played like... Uh, two three about four songs maybe five off of so which everybody would expect yeah um did a couple of us one from up and then he did salisbury hill and did Biko as well at the end um, oh. it's just yeah incredible stuff really really good uh, very good weekend very expensive weekend but very good weekend <laughs> um so that's what i was up to last week but um flo is obviously going to be occupied with motherhood um I'm going to be occupied with all sorts of wonderful synth shows in, in the coming weeks, synthesised in Cambridge, and then there's Synth Fest and there's Gear Fest. 
Andrew, what have you got lined up in your world over the next week? Well, I, I'm sort of starting to pull all the synths out of the little dirty cubby holes and everywhere and leads and God knows mm. what else and start putting them together. I've, got, I've yeah. got a corner that I'm just beginning to populate. So that's happening more and more. And also so I can get enough time to find the ones I need to bring down to Ken. I've yeah. been promising this for two weeks now. But I, I will I will get around to it, I promise, Ken. You know. I no, will. don't. I By the way, you need some new end cheeks on your DX five. Yeah, I know everyone's saying that. That's oh. why it's been everywhere. I love it. Looks the like fact it. That it's, yeah, all right. So we'll get some new end cheeks. That's we'll your sort. job. I'll, I'll, I'll put you in touch with, with my guy who did mine. My very, guy. He's very, very good. Uh, I've got a drill. You don't know, no, you don't. Oh, you want something good, you want something good, and they're, they're reasonably priced as well. Okay, Kent, what are you up to? What are you fixing? You say you've got a 3300 coming in next week, he's got yeah. a DX5 coming in. <laughs> yes, anything, anything else fun coming into your workshop? Uh, into the workshop, let me see. No, no, oh, no, good. no, it's pretty quiet. Um, we started uh, our R&D project. Okay. Uh, um, Fiona's busy uh, trying to code. Uh, it's a very long-winded process mm -hmm. of her sort of like screaming and shouting and throwing bits across the front room. Um, and so yeah, and, and that's coming along. That is coming along. Um, uh, let's think. Uh, I've got to do some more to the Mustang. Uh, we're decorating. Uh, what else? I'm actually playing in here. Would you believe? Actually, been writing some stuff. So, yeah. Kind of busy ish. I was just not doing quite so much work. Um, sorry, I was a little bit distracted because I've missed a question um, from Icing the Body Electric. And here we go. I found it. I, I honestly, like, Ben is normally the guy that sits there and goes through and, and marks all the questions so that I can just go in and make it look like I know what I'm doing. Mm. Um, so this is the last question for you, Flo, before we let you go. Um, so he says, I suspect Florence has big music theory knowledge stroke skills. How does Florence find it relates to the more electronic synthesis, synthetic aspect of tonality, articulation and timbral possibilities? So how, how are you applying those kind of basic music theory knowledge and skills to electronic music, I guess, is the, the short version of that. Yeah, I would say it's it's a totally different brain that you need to use uh, for synthesizer it's more can't explain it's more it's not in because it's very cerebral as well to understand how it works like all the yeah but i don't use my music knowledge to learn how to manipulate synths and modulator and oscillator it's kind of two things completely different for me actually mm. And I try to blend them together. Okay. But yes, but I think it's I'm having so much fun in trying to play and discovering the sense sounds um, mm -hmm. and going yeah. deep into like oh how does it work, how does it like uh, what are the you know the different ways <coughs> and things like that. So, yeah. Um, but yes. It's, mm -hmm. it's for me. It's two different things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know um, if it answered the question. So. <laughs> no, no. It, yeah, I think well, I think I hope it did. Um, I I've got one more question that I I was I got it in the back of my head and, and it slipped away. It's just popped in again. So I noticed for, from your biography on your website that you were born in Germany. You moved to Belgium at a young age. Um, you studied and graduated at the Royal Conservatory there. You went to. Berkeley and Boston you moved to the south of France for five years and then you've moved to London so you're yes. you're very journeyed um you're you you've traveled to you know Europe and the United States and I was just wondering has each culture and country influenced you in your writing do you do you find that you know you, you you're, you're using elements of of kind of you know local styles and cultures and music and does that come out into your overall compositions these days Definitely, yes, definitely. Um, each place where I've lived is completely different. And you know what, in France, I like as well the kind of more 
I, I, it, yeah, it's difficult. Each country is different. I would say Belgium is more conservative, but there's a nice like a pop uh, alternative scene, especially in the north of the the, mm. the north of the country. Mm. The US. What I liked in the US is that you can really um, coming from a background classic. Uh, classical background music when I when I moved to the US it was nice to see that they don't care about mixing genres so they mm -hmm. just mix everything together it's not always for the best <laughs> but you you really kind of have less um, fear of doing whatever you want so that's something as well yeah and and here yes yeah, since I'm in the so it's been nine years in the UK and I've been actually diving more deeply into synthesis and synths and electronic music um, uh, maybe just because of the people I'm surrounded by yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I mean yeah you're working with one of the godfathers of electronic music yes, certainly in this definitely. country so that's got yes. to yeah it's got to rub off hasn't it yeah um, yeah fantastic now that, that's really interesting because I always always wondered you know uh, every country every culture has its own musical styles and musical uh, influences and and having traveled around all those you must be picking up some of those that must all feed in so that's that's yeah. dead cool um which brings us to the end of the show um, oh, question, another question oh, go on then, i'll go on one more right <laughs> um how many times do you find yourself in a project where you're not working with a locked picture and you're working with a director that doesn't know what he wants and how often have you just wanted to kill them <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to mention names. You, you, no. you don't have to mention names. <laughs> Just it can a, happen. A shove of fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen quite a lot. Yeah. But you have to find a way to exp explain your ideas in mm. their language. Yeah. So yeah. you, I have to know how to. What I want to do musically, I don't have to explain it musically, but in terms of different. And some, sometimes words. the relationship means that your what you're doing musically informs the editor and the director. It tells them where to take it. That that, that partnership can be really rewarding when you find mm. it that way. So it it can it can work both ways. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah, it does. And, and, and I've, so far, I've been really lucky with the people I've been working <laughs> with. So, <laughs> is it true then that there is no such thing as a locked picture? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's all. Final, 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 <laughs> final, 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 final. We're final. reshooting. We're reshooting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flo, look, it's been an absolute delight to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on and for answering all of our questions. Thank uh, I know you. We've, we've thrown a lot at you and you've, you've answered brilliantly and it's been really, really interesting. Um, from all of us, certainly here in the studio, and I'm, I'm, I think I speak for everybody in the chat room, the very best of luck in the next few weeks. I hope everything goes safely and smoothly and that you enjoy it because it's a magical time. Um, so we send you all our very best for that and hope everything goes well and um, do come back again uh, at some yes. point soon um, once everything's settled down and yes. um, maybe we'll get you and Martin on together that would be cool <gasps> that would be amazing yeah. that would be very cool um, and um, we hope to see you on the road in, sometime in November yes definitely. brilliant thank, thank you, you ever so much thank you big round thank of applause all. there for our guest Flo so hey there everyone <laughs> Gentlemen, um, thank you for your company once more and thank you for your assistance and your input. And it's all really good, makes the show great. Um, thank you to all of our um, viewers, especially uh, Stephen Smith, who seems to be donating this amount every single week. Uh, I don't does. know whether it's the I don't know whether it's the medication that he's on. Um, I mean that sincerely. <laughs> Um, Steve was in surgery a few weeks ago and he actually posted up that he was um, in a very funny place because he was sat in his bed dosed up on meds that were making him all a bit strange uh, and watching our show and he said it was the most pleasant experience and I hope that you know, most people don't have to take uh, drugs to, to enjoy our show but we appreciate your donation Stephen 
<laughs> Are you not it, supposed to? Oh, damn. Wow, damn, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you ever so much for your donation. It is so much appreciated. And to everyone that donates to us, whether it's on air or off air, um, we love you all. Thank you ever so much. I just noticed Alex Ball in the chat room. Hi, Alex. Thank you for your help this week. Um, I'll keep that one quiet. Um, but look out for Alex's um, videos. He's just put one up about the MXR um, effects unit, which is really, really yeah. good. Um, but do expect um, two great videos coming fairly soon. One featuring the Korg Blackboard synth, which mm. is that big educational thing. And he's just taken loan delivery of an Analog Solutions Colossus. Oh. So one can only imagine what Alex is going to be doing with those things. But watch his channel. Go and subscribe to Alex Ball Music yeah. on YouTube if you haven't already. It's one of the best synthesizer channels. It's way better than this. Uh, it's really, really good. So do go and subscribe to that. You have um, to thank the Penguin of Death. Thank you, Penguin of Death. Yeah, do thank come you, along Penguin again. Of Death. Yeah, thank you, Penguin <laughs> of Death. We, please don't. Yes, give yeah, us, please, give us a bit more time. Please don't hurt us. Yeah, um, yes. we will see you all same time, same place next week. I don't think we've got a guest lined up yet, but that doesn't stop mm. us from having a good time. So please do come and join us same time, same place next week here on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. Of course, if you haven't already, come and join us on the Facebook group um, because that's where we all sort of gather and you know talk about synthy stuff and not just nerd out in general. General. Um, so do come and join us there if you haven't already and do make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button and smash that bell is what the kids say or something we're nearly up to 3,000 subscribers which really? you know is yeah we are we're about 10 away from 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 3,000 wow. which is small by comparison but I'm happy small and perfect and growing growing and growing growing very slowly but we are growing yes brilliant all right um take care everyone we'll see you um Next week, have fun. Have a brilliant weekend. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.